QuickBooks Online 2021. Receive payment and make related deposits. Let's get into it with Intuit's QuickBooks Online 2021. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars problem. We're going to be recording the customer payment and related deposits. So in other words, if I hit the drop down here, we have the customer information. We had an invoice in the past. Now we're going to have the payment on that invoice. We're going to take those, those payments that we have received then, the money now in undeposited funds, and then deposit them into the bank. Let's check this out real quick in the flow chart that's on the desktop version. You don't need the desktop version to follow along. We just want to take a look at the flow chart here. So we have the invoice that's going to be created. We're imagining we're receiving the money that, uh, that was on the invoice. That would be decreasing the accounts receivable. The other side could either go directly into the checking account at that point in time, or it could go into undeposited funds. You might put it into the checking account if you receive something like a check, an individual check that you're going to put into the bank account as one lump sum. Therefore, it'll show on our books as the same way as it will be on the bank statement. Otherwise, if it was something like cash, or if you have to sort out your credit card payments in some way, then you might need to go through undeposited funds, which we will practice here, and then take those payments, which might be more than one, and deposit them into the bank, possibly in some kind of lump sum. The goal being that the deposit will be in the same format in our books as shown on the bank statement so that we can do a bank reconciliation as easily as possible. So let's go back to our report here or back to QuickBooks. Let's open up our trial balance. We're going to try to do this by just going back and forth and checking the good old trial balance. We're going to right click on the tab up top and duplicate the tab. Going to, then to the reports on the left hand side. So we're going to open up the reports on the left hand side. Typing into the find window, the trial balance, the trial balance. And then we're going to open that up. We're going to range change it up top, ending at 1231.21. Go ahead and run that report. I'm going to close up the hamburger. Let's go back to the first tab now. Go into the first tab. I'm going to go down then to the invoice item, or I'm sorry, the sales item, which is basically our customer center. And then we could see these invoices in a couple different ways, meaning... We might go to the invoices items here and look for the open invoices when we receive a payment on them. And I might go to the status up top and say I want to see the, the unpaid items either overdue or not yet due. I'm going to go to not yet due. And these would be the open items. We can then record a receive payment here. We might also go to the actual customer. So I might go to the actual customer up top and then say I got a payment from Anderson Guitars. Go into then Anderson Guitars which is another common way to take a look at this. And then we could take a look at the items that are, are outstanding or the invoice. Here's an open invoice here, which you could also search for and filter for if you so choose using the filters, looking at transactions. Say you want the open invoices, for example, apply that out. We can run the receive payment here, or you might simply just create a receive payment. You might say, hey, I got the payment here. I'm just going to go up top and say, I want to go to receive payment form receive payment form and then type in who you receive the payment from which is in our case anderson guitars and then it should populate down below say hey there's an invoice i'm paraphrasing like quickbooks is showing you here like hey there's an invoice related to anderson is that the one you're looking at like you're referring to here and we're going to say yeah and check it off that's the one so we'll check that off there's the 420 i'm going to bring the date back up to the 19th now I'm just going to assume cash payments here just because I'm, I want to just emphasize the fact that we're, we're grouping the payments together that could be multiple payments and then depositing them into the bank. If it was a check, for example, you might easily just basically scan the check or something like that to your bank account and not need to do the added step of the undeposited funds and then group multiple deposits together from multiple received payments and or uh, sales receipts into the bank account. So that's why I'm, I'm choosing cash here. And then we're going to put it into undeposited funds as opposed to the checking account once again so that we can group multiple possible deposits together or multiple amounts together as we put them into the bank account together. So there we have that. What's this going to do when we record it? It's going to increase the undeposited funds account. The other side then go into a decrease in the accounts receivable. Let's go ahead and run that. So we're going to save it and close it. And let's check it out on the good old TB trial balance. Go over to, over to the TB up top. We're going to go ahead and run that report once again. And I'm going to 
hold down control scroll up just to like 110 percent this time and if we go into the undeposited funds we see the increase in the undeposited funds so we see that there it is down here there's the payment we got if i go into that payment we're going to see it also in terms of our receive payment there it is closing that back out scrolling back up top going back to our tb trial balance the other side then going to um the the decrease in the accounts receivable right here accounts receivable we got paid that 420 for anderson there's the payment once again scrolling back up back to our trial balance let's then right click on this tab up top i'm going to make another report for the accounts receivable so we can see that detail so we'll go into another report here reports tab on the left hand side and then we're going to be looking for the customer report so who owes you and i'm looking for the customer balance detail customer balance detail report now i'd like to see the actual payment that was been made not just the open invoices so i'm going to customize this report up top go down to the filters on it and i'd like to see then the uh paid the paid i want to see not just the unpaid but all of it i want to see everything so i'll run it and there we have it so now we've got the anderson is back down to zero balance but we could see what happens right it's got an invoice and then it's paid and then an invoice and then it's paid that's kind of the trend that we should see in these things if i go back down we're at the 34 8 11 going back to the trial balance to check that out we are at in the trial balance the 34 8 11 there as well let's go back to the first tab if we go back to the first tab then we could see under anderson if i go back to the anderson uh item or if I remove the filters here, let's remove the filters. Then now we see the payment that took place and we can see it in basically the activity under the Anderson customer. Let's do this again. So this time I'm going to do it another way. I'm going to go to the sales tab, which is basically our customer center. I'm going to go to the customers tab up top. And this time let's look at who we got the payment from. We're imagining, okay, we received a payment. We're going to imagine cash here. So from Eric Music. So then I go into Eric Music and I'm going to say, all right. I'm going to go into there and apply it out to to one of these items that are owed to us at this point let's open this one this is the one actually this one's closed by the way just this one and then i can just make a receive payment form right from there so i'm going to say receive payment it starts to populate for us there's the eric music and if we tap through this i'll keep the date the same it's going to go into undeposited funds once again i'm going to say it's cash again even though these are large dollar amounts but uh i'm going to check it off there's the there's the amount there's tied to then the invoice and once again it's going to what's it going to do increase undeposited funds and i want to emphasize just the cash so we can group them together and then make the deposit even though there are large dollar amounts which we would probably get in some other format in this particular instance but uh, then the other side is going to be decreasing the receivable account let's go ahead and save it and close it and then check it out save it close it back to the trial balance tab let's refresh it so we're working with fresh stuff again we got the accounts uh, receivable should be going down so accounts receivable going down by that to 26 to 60 for the eric music this time and you see it you know there's the increase with the invoice and then there's the payment and then the other side if i go back to our our balance or trial balance the other side then is going to the undeposited funds so if we open up then the undeposited funds which is right there there's the undeposited funds we see that item as well so we've got the payment of the 26250 scrolling back up going back to the good old trial balance we can also see the activity if we go to the accounts receivable report the detail report run it or refresh it take a look at the music our eric music down below so we've got eric music where we have the twenty-six thousand invoice and then the payment the total at the bottom at now eight thousand five sixty one seventy back to the trial balance we see the amount of the eight five six one seventy there as well now we have this twenty six six seventy in undeposited funds so now we're going to imagine going to the bank depositing it into the bank in that one lump sum even though they're constituting or coming from two separate received payment items from two different customers so we're then going to go back to the first tab again and we're going to say that uh, we're going to deposit these items so i'm going to go to the the drop down up top we're going to go to the other category to make a deposit 
Now we have to do it this way as opposed to just going right to the check register and entering the deposit because if I go to the check register, I'm not linking it really to the payment forms and that's what I want to do. So remember, if I go back to the desktop version just to look at the flowchart, when we go to the deposit form, if they're linked to these items, these items are the ones that could then be increasing undeposited funds and we want to make sure to then go to the deposit form and make sure that we're linking out if we're making some other kind of deposit that is not linked to undeposited funds created by a sales receipt or the receipt payment form, then I might simply go right to the register and enter the deposit there. So we're going to go back in and I'm going to say these two items up top, we're going to check those two out. This is going to be increasing the checking account on uh, one, let's say 23. Let's bring this up to the 23rd, 123. So we're going to bring them up there. Remember that we're checking these two items off. If we were doing some other kind of deposit that wasn't related to undeposited funds, wasn't related to a payment or sales receipt, then we might go at the bottom down here and record some, just some account, such as if we had a loan, it might be a loan payable account, or if we had like the owner putting it in, it might be like an equity type of account. So what's this going to do? It's going to be increasing the checking account, of course, and then the other side is going to be decreasing undeposited funds going back down to zero, showing the undeposited funds acting as basically a clearing account, a temporary account, not only a temporary account, but a clearing account, a very temporary account that goes up and down, hopefully like in the same day, back down to zero. So I'm going to say save it and close it. And there we have that. Let's go back to the trial balance and see if see what happens here. If I refresh running the report again to make it fresh, then we see that the checking account should be going up now. The checking account goes up by that 26,670. It's now grouped with both of those together, which is good because that's how we hope to see it on the actual bank statement, making it easy for us to reconcile in the bank reconciliation our book to the bank, even though it's being built from these two items that actually kind of took place two different customers that we received payments from closing this back out scrolling back up the other side then it's going to be decreasing the um, undeposited funds which is currently at zero and that's what we expect to happen it's not just a, a temporary just remember the terminology this is kind of confusing because a temporary account is one that goes to zero from time to time but those are typically going to be thought of as income statement accounts they close out to retained earnings and they're usually open for at least a month or a year until you close them out, right? A clearing account, I would say it goes up and down in a very short period of time. In this case, like the same day you're hoping, right? If there's a zero in the undeposited funds for a long period of time, something probably went wrong uh, because it should be increasing and decreasing. Or at least if there's something in it, it should reflect some kind of payment that uh, you have received but have not yet deposited. So if we go into that item, we see the activity here down below and notice we have the two deposits now or it's not two deposits but it's reflected as two different line items for the same deposit that happened on the same date so that you can kind of tie them out to the payment form so here's the 26250 payment form the 26250 payment the 420 payment form the 420 deposit so then if we go into either one of these of course we'll get to that same deposit which has both of those items uh, included in it so then we're going to close this back out scroll on back up top gonna take it on back to the uh to the form here there's our trial balance so you could check your work here and see if uh, if you're following along with it and or we should be printing this out in, whenever we remember to do so after the end of the presentations which we've been doing pretty good so far to do and you could check your work there as well